Welcome back to Out of Spec Testing. Today on deck, we have the Chevy Blazer EVSS, the spicy meatball of a crossover SUV. Basically, Chevy's top of the line EV if you don't look at the trucks. This is complete with their 12 module battery pack, which is about 102 kilowatt hours usable, although we've typically pulled more out of it than that. They're always a bit conservative on their approach with a measuring capacity from what we can tell. So, actually probably a bit more than 102, which means we'll probably also charge a bit more than 102. And that's what we're doing today, charge test time. We recently ran this vehicle in the 10% challenge and well, it did not do very well. The 10% challenge, which is plug in at 10%, charge 15 minutes, drive 80 miles an hour, simulating a road trip, scenario, uh, it only did 57 miles, which is a very poor number. This seemed to be in part due to the cooling issues that we've seen with many of GM's vehicles. Basically, running climate control while charging, which is how we do the 10% challenge, drastically affects how much energy the car can allocate to cooling the battery while it's charging. Something about shared coolant loops and how it prioritizes climate cooling over battery cooling no matter what. GM's really proud of their AC, and it's great, really good AC. But today we have a charging test, which is run with climate off. So we should see better numbers in this regard, and we're doing a zero to 100%. That's with all loads fully off, the car fully preconditioned. And in this case, we have optimal external conditions, roughly 50 degrees ambient, cloudy, a little bit of rain here and there. It should charge about as good as possible. So now I will hand it off to my dear friend Cameron, who is doing the actual charging test. Zero percent. I am going to turn off extra loads. So no climate, no headlights, no heated or cooled seats. Um, yeah, the radio is not going to be on either. I'm not going to charge anything off of the USB ports in here. So that's it. Let's get going. And the Ionic 5 is just pulling away. So now I have the entire station to myself, at least for now. The car is preconditioned. I've been navigating to this charger for a while, and I did manual preconditioning uh, for, gosh, almost the last 80 miles. So um, we are nice and toasty warm. As you can see, and you'll see this on your screen too, battery is 86 degrees, not too bad. At least one of the modules is. Um, we can double check to see what all the rest of them are, but at least when I was looking at this earlier, all the modules were, th were within like a half a degree of each other, so... Um, battery is, is warm, at least warm enough to get charged, and the car thinks it's fully preconditioned, so we'll see what, uh, what it all looks like here. Here we go at 15x speed. Around four minutes in, Cameron noted the AC compressor started running to cool the battery, but it's still holding steady at 180 kilowatts, better than the 10% challenge charging for sure. Again, temperatures being around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, giving this the best chance at a good session. We're limited at the 500 amps the cable can offer. You can just see how, well, how low the voltage is on these cars. GM non-double stack batteries means low voltage. As a reminder, the station is totally empty, so no shared capacity to worry about with other cars, because these dispensers are technically shared in pairs. At 25%, we see a dip to 142 kilowatts. Then at 30%, drops to 125 kilowatts. By the way, 15 minutes to do 40 kilowatt hours as compared to the 28 kilowatt hours of the 10% challenge 15 minute charging that had climate control on. So that's a huge difference, nearly 50% more energy by just not having climate control on. Then we see a gradual taper through the 30% range settling to 66 kilowatts at 38%. That is just abysmal. Maybe it'll get a second wind, but it's estimating 42 minutes to 80. Keep in mind, 20 minutes ago, it estimated 48 minutes to 80. 50 kilowatt hours delivered now 24 minutes in, still crawling at roughly 68 kilowatts, but very gradually climbing. Okay, emphasis on gradual climbing, all the way up to 75 kilowatts at 50%. Not a great number. 30 minutes total to get to 50%. Also, not a great number. The gradual climbing continues, definitely a marathon, not a sprint for this guy. 90 kilowatts at 58%, battery pack simply requesting more current as it climbs. Windshield wipers come on for rain, unfortunately, but help see the charger a bit, so it's a necessary evil, by the way. 
Now, 45 minutes in, 95 kilowatts, so it's just really gradually ramped, approaching 80 kilowatt hours delivered. Honestly, 80 kilowatt hours in 45 minutes, that's not too bad. That's nearly a Model 3 battery pack or Model Y battery pack in 45 minutes, which for those Teslas, by the way, it's usually about an hour zero to full. But obviously this is just a little under 80% of this car's battery. Let's get to the real taper of the curve. It's holding strong in the mid 90s, all the way through 75%. Now this is a good charging speed for this SOC, holding nearly 100 kilowatts all the way to almost 80% as it tapers once again. By the way, 54 minutes to 80, which isn't too far off the original quote of 48 minutes. But then again, this is in a world where you see Hyundai and Kia delivering 10 to 80 in crazy fast speeds compared to this. After 81%, it crosses down to 75 kilowatts again, gradually stepping down to around 50 to 55 kilowatts range at 85%. Then at 86%, we see what seems to be a voltage check or cell balancing. Gradual taper again to the high 30s kilowatt at 90%, high 20s at 95%, and then BMS shows 100% at just around an hour and a half, but it's still taking in level two charging speeds at over 30 amps, possibly building back some buffer. Another 10 or so minutes of top balancing before the contactors finally clicked off. Charger still shows 99%, but it was done. So one hour and 42 minutes for zero to full. 118 kilowatt hours delivered. That was what was delivered from the charger and city charge. Car never did say 100%, but I don't know if it ever will. It's doing some top balancing for the last uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. So there you go. There's our our price there. There's 48 cents kilowatt hours, just under $57. Let's get unplugged. It was a great charging session today. Um, we didn't have anybody else in the charger except for that Ionic 5 that was several stalls down when I first plugged in, but he left within five minutes of me being here. So cool weather, a little bit of rain here and there, but no big deal. We are all good to go. So final thoughts, that's uh, not a great showing. I mean, these are lower voltage cars. And so we brought it to the charger that could do the most possible charging. Again, completely empty, no shared loads with anyone, best possible temperatures. Everything, as far as we could tell, was set up as good as possible. Curious of you guys who have this 12 module battery pack, whether it's in the Blazer or the Lyric, heck, even the Prologue or the Acura ZDX. Um, curious how your charging experiences have been, both with climate on and climate off. You know, I've recently been charging the Escalade IQ, uh, which also was drastically affected by climate. It seems to be just a known thing. However, floating around the ethers of the interweb, I've heard that there's possibly a dealership installed update that can fix some of this uh, issue. I'm curious if that's true. I haven't actually heard confirmation from GM on this standpoint, but perhaps one of you guys can enlighten us. The car, according to the car, was up to date on software and even the Escalade I just tested yesterday, by the way, this Blazer was like weeks ago, the Escalade yesterday also showed it was completely up to date. So. Not really sure, but all we can really say is, holy cow, climate has a drastic effect on charging. This charging, even without climate, still not very good. It's just not an impressive charging beast. And I think Cameron would agree. So looking at the curve, yeah, it's not, not great. Really interesting how it drops off pretty fast, faster than I would expect. It almost seems like it kind of smoked its thermals had to drastically pull it back and then it gradually recovered as things cooled down. I think that's what happened in my Escalade test as well. I don't wanna call that a GM thing because actually we've seen that with Lucid and even Porsche Taycan, for example. Giving a car a charger that can do its max performance will oftentimes overstress the thermals to which case it has to drastically pull back. So I'm curious if I actually plugged this into a lower powered charger that maybe can't deliver the full 500 amps, if we actually could have seen it hold a better speed for longer because it wouldn't smoke the thermals and then have to recover. Curious what your guys' thoughts are. Thanks Cameron for uh, charging it up. I know that was a long session. There you go folks. Here's a successful charging test, zero to 100% of the Chevy Blazer EV. Not the best charging speeds. Uh, I'd say this is a great commuter, especially if you can charge at home. Um, occasional road trips, 
really depends on your state of charge when you plug in with the caveat of leave climate control off if you really possibly can while you're on a road trip or you know just easy charging in general uh but yeah not a bad little car it's not that little actually it's pretty big nice and quick though